Okay, so welcome to another technology video. Um, today we are going to be showing you how you can set up a QNAP NAS drive to QNAP NAS drive um, sync. So this is basically copying data from a remote NAS drive to a local NAS drive. So we use this to provide off-site backup for some of our clients. So today we're going to show you how you need to set things up. So uh, as you can see, the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to your firewall. So in our instance, we are using a PFSense uh, firewall on our uh, local office network. So the first thing you want to do is because we're on a DHCP uh, WAN IP address, we need to tell our system that whenever our WAN IP address changes, uh, that will automatically populate across the internet so those remote NAS drives will be able to find our IP address and therefore um, connect to us. So what we want to do is we want to first of all set up our um, dynamic DNS. So we want to come to services and we want to come to dynamic DNS and as you can see here we've got ours already set up. So um, you want to go into your settings and the way you set it up is you pick your service type there's a whole load of them here we're using a free host name so we need to renew ours every uh, 30 days we add our host name um, if you've got an MX record which we're not so basically we are just using um, a standard host name which we've already pre-configured on noip.com which I'll show you later we have our username here which will obviously be blurred out and our password. <clears throat> so that's all there is to it. Um, once you've got that set up and configured, when you save it, it will go off and any um, WAN IP address changes will automatically populate to the no IP client, uh, to the no IP system. So let's go and have a look at that. So what we wanna do is we wanna go to our service so you need to do this before obviously you uh, you do your update on your firewall but um, I'm just showing you the easiest method um, because I already had the system up so all we've done here is we've logged into our noip.com dashboard and we've chosen um, a host name and on our host name we've selected the domain that we want to have it on so you basically create your username and password on the system, then you create your host entry, then you would come to your um, dynamic DNS setup on your device. So that could be your own router, it doesn't have to be a PFSense box, uh, it just so happens that that's what we're using. So we'll come out of that. Once that's done, um, that's all there is to that part of it. Um, what you wanna do next is um, you want to go to your remote system and find its IP address. Now your remote system uh, needs to have a fixed IP address. Um, so in our instance, that is what we've got on our remote clients, but for ourselves, we're using uh, DHCP. Okay. So the next thing that you wanna do is once you know what your external IP address is of your remote system, you wanna come into your firewall settings and go into NAT, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some port forwarding. So as you can see here, I've got our two systems set up that we are doing it from. Um, again, this will be blurred out, but if we go into uh, this first one here, um, we select our WAN interface because it's, that's where it's gonna be coming in from. Uh, we're going to be using TCP and then we want to come to the source details so you want to click on the uh, advanced options so that gives us our source address so the source address would be the IP address of your remote um, connection so uh, it doesn't have to be the IP address of your QNAP NAS device. Uh, it needs to be the external IP address of the router, so the WAN IP address of the router. And we want to tell it that we're going to be using any source port from that IP address. And then the destination is going to be the WAN address. Um, so you set this as to the WAN address, which means that whenever your external IP address changes, it's always going to accept that traffic. So we set the WAN address in here and then we're going to set our 
port. So the port that uh, we are using is 873, which is rsync. Um, and then what you want to do is on the redirect target IP, you want to set the IP address of your QNAP device that you're using internally. So in our instance, it's 192.168.0.241. And then you want to set the port, which is the same port of the WAN IP address. So the port that your QNAP device is listening on for rsync, which is TCP873. We want to add that and then you can add a description and then down here under the filter rule association um, it you want to have it so that because we've already created it it's already saying that it's going to update this rule but when you're creating the new rule it will be selected for uh, create new associated filter rule so once you save that you can then come back into your um, your NAT system and you will see it here with a tick box to say it's enabled this symbol here in the, means um, redirect and then as you can see here when traffic hits your WAN interface using TCP from that source address on any port um, and it hits the WAN IP address of your router on port 873 then you want to send that traffic to your internal device using that port and then there's your description. So that's all there is to it in terms of the port forwarding. Now because you've told it to create a relevant um, firewall rule we can go into the rules and have a look at the firewall rules on our system so here's the two rules that have, would have been created and as you can see here what this symbol here means it means log so what we do is we actually go into the firewall rule here because your rule when it's created won't have logging enabled so we want to log packets so we want to log good packets so we can see um, when the traffic has come in um, so if you've got a really busy system or you've got thousands of uh, NAS devices then potentially you would want to untick this but when you first set it up it's useful to make sure that um, it's all working correctly so we leave that one ticked. We go back to our rules so that's all there is to it so the rule from your port forward has already been created for you so you don't need to do anything here and what it's saying here is the source port talking to the destination port um, then allow that traffic. So in terms of PFSense and firewall setup that's all there is to that part. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to move on to the NAS configuration. Okay so here we are on the NAS device we're going to log in Okay, and um, the way that we've got this set up is we have created a volume per customer um, with its own file system in there and shared folder. So um, what this means is that no other, um, no one client can see any other one client. So only each client coming in is able to see their own file system. So let's go into this here and as you can see here we've got nothing set up on this at all in terms of jobs but what we do have is we have our services created. So you want to create basically a server. So um, we are not using RTRR so what this means is it's a, a real-time sync so um, we're not actually using that because we run our sync jobs uh, at a certain time every day so we use our rsync server and as you can see here um, what we've got is we have got our rsync server enabled and the port set to whatever you want to set it to so we're using the standard port and then the download limit we leave as uh, unlimited so that's all there is to it at this part. Um, you can create a separate rsync username and password, um, but we don't use this um, as part of this rsync server. We actually use separate username and password. So we'll show you how, how we've configured that. 
So once you've got this enabled, that's all there is to it. Basically what you're telling the system to do is to listen on port 873 and um, then accept any connections coming in from that. So what we now need to do is to come into our users and we're going to set up a user. So we have set up a username um, that we're going to be using just for our NAS to NAVS um, replication. Uh, so you would create your user and then under your shared folder permissions you would give access to um, the relevant users that you want to uh, connect in from. So you can create a single user per client that's coming in and then allocate just that um, volume and shared folder um, to that client. Uh, we don't do it like that. We're not doing it as secure as we could do. So in an ideal world, you would want to have um, each client using their own e their own username um, with only giving them access to their one um, file system where their backup data is stored. Okay, so once you've logged into your remote QNAP device, um, we are going to be using a um, one-way sync job so to set that up what you want to do is you want to come into your hybrid backup sync here and there's a few different um, things that you need to configure in this one so the first one is you want to come into your storage spaces and you want to create yourself um, a storage space so I'm not going to create a new one but I'm going to show you how to do it so you come in and you click on create and um, what type of remote server you are using. So as you can see here, you can use SIFS SMB, remote FTP server or remote rsync server based on the services that you've enabled. So we are gonna be using an rsync server. You give it a name here. In this section here, you would add your remote server IP address or um, host name. So for us, because we're using a dynamic DNS name, we would add that dynamic DNS name here. And then the type of server that it is, um, as you can see here, we are using um, we're using a, a, a TS-based NAS rsync server. And then you would configure your uh, username on your remote server, and then you would add your password in here. Uh, and then you would click on test connection and then you can also run a speed test. Now don't be alarmed at the uh, speed that it runs at. So we rarely get more than about uh, two megabits a second. Um, so this is across the internet. So you're reliant on a whole host of um, uh, other people allowing your connection to come through. And then if you're gonna be encrypting your traffic, you would want to set up your, um, your port 22 so you would um, use that at the remote end, but that is obviously going to disable everything. So we don't use that um, and That is as far as the setup is concerned all there is to it So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get edit hours because we've changed our host name We're going to save that off. So here's our rsync server all configured with the username and password. The next thing you want to do is you want to come into your services. So this is basically um, what your system is listening for. So um, if you're going to be using your local NAS for an rsync server, then you would set that up here. We are. so. Um, but what we're going to do is we've told it that we're going to use uh, a username and password locally. The next thing that you want to do is come into your sync job and set up your sync job. So to do that, create a two-way, one-way or an active sync job. Um, so active sync job uh, we're not using. Two ways, obviously, if we delete stuff off our server here, it's going to delete it off the uh, remote server that's connecting in. So we just do it as a one-way sync job because we are backing up um, that remote QNAP device. So on the QNAP device here, what we're going to do is we'll go in and we'll show you how to set that up. So it's a one-way sync job and it copies data to the remote NAS, which is our system here. And it's going from the local NAS to the rsync server and then this is the folder or the, the volume that we're copying across and this is the um, remote uh, 
file system on our local server. Once you've done your initial backup, you can come in and schedule it. So we have got our schedule to a daily backup at 9 p.m. Um, and that will kick off and run at those times. And then the rule set that we're using, so the policies that we're using, we're using congestion control. Um, we're checking the file contents. Most of this stuff we you don't need to um, change, but um, the two ones here, check your file contents. So we want to make sure that actually um, the files on one system are identical and if they're not then it will then copy that file across so that takes care of new and changed files. Under our options um, we'd want to send a notification if the job fails and also if we get um, uh, an abnormal termination then we want to restart it so we, we're going to tick this box here and we're going to save our job and then once that's done, what we can do is we can run this sync job and we should see that appear in our uh, local firewall. Okay, so let's sync that, um, start that job off. And then let's now go back to our firewall and we're gonna go into our system traffic logs. We're gonna go into our firewall and we should see our connection should see our connection come in shortly. There we go, so that's our NAT connection coming in onto our system. So let's go back here, as you can see here, that's uh, happened very quickly. Uh, there's no, there was no um, files to transfer, but if you wanna check out to make sure that it did run properly, you can come into your uh, results file here. Uh, you can actually see that, yes, uh, we transferred uh, 300k of data, so a file potentially. One file updated, that was the size of the file, uh, the rest is um, uh, unchanged. So that's all there is to it. If you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can see future videos from us on various uh, technology that we find useful and um, just like to say thanks for watching.